Hello, my fiber friends. <laughs> Welcome to the Worsted Witch Podcast. My name is Monica. I go by Mika Knits here on YouTube and on Instagram where you can find me. Um, <laughs> this is my little crafty podcast where I get to share with you all of the things that I am making, mainly knitting and some crochet, but I'm also doing a cross stitch project that I haven't introduced yet, but <laughs> just random knitting crafty stuff that I work on. Let's go ahead and jump into the video today. I've got a few things to show you. Um, I've got three new works in progress to show you today. They're all new and I've got two new acquisitions. One of them I haven't even opened yet. It's very exciting though. So I'm gonna open it for you live here on camera and I hope you enjoy that. Um, so let's just jump in and get into it. Normally I also like to end my podcasts with TV and book recommendations, um, things that I'm watching or things that I'm reading that I really like that I just want to share with you all. Normally I put that at the end of my podcast, but today I'm actually going to flip it around a little bit and <laughs> I'm going to put it at the beginning of my podcast because there is a very special book that I want to highlight for you guys today um, that it's totally different from any of the other books that I have ever recommended before. So let's go ahead and get into that. Um, if you hear a slight humming on the camera, I'm going to try to fix it when I'm, when I take this to editing, but I have a, I have a fan <laughs> in my room right now. I might turn it off, but I have a fan because whenever I start to film a video, for whatever reason, it just gets like really, really hot. <laughs> like I just, I don't know if my body gets hot or if the room that I'm in gets hot, I don't know, but it just gets so, so hot. Like it's boiling in here, even though it's like 32 degrees outside, it is so hot in this room. I just, I can't tell you anyway. So it has to be on right now just for me to be comfortable, but I'll turn it off a little bit later. Um, anyway, so sorry about that. If you hear a slight hum. So let's get into the book recommendation. Like I said, this is a very special book. Um, this is a children's book, actually. It is called Ava and May Own a Lemonade Stand. Um, this book, this beautiful book, was written by a good friend of mine. Her name is Brittany Diaz. She's actually a girl that I went to college with, and I'm so proud of her that she wrote this book. It's amazing. Um, the illustrations were done by someone named Amon Purnell. I'm assuming that's one of Brittany's friends. I've never met that person, but um, I'm sure they're lovely as well. Um, and this is her first children's book you guys it's so so cute I just wanted to highlight it for you Ava and May um, they are sisters here's Ava and May they're super super cute this is Brittany's first children's book but she's writing the Ava and May as a series so there is a second one that she's already completed and written um, it will be released here pretty pretty soon I'm not sure, sure exactly of the date I'll have to get back to you on that but um but yeah, so it is going to be written as a series, but I just wanted to highlight this little children's book for all of you guys out there that might have kids yourself, or maybe you're an educator. Um, this would be a great, a great book to introduce to your students. So Ava and May are sisters. They go to a fair. The fair uh, runs out of lemonade and they decide to open a lemonade stand themselves but realize that they've never done it before. So they run into all kinds of bumps along the way. Um, and it's their story of how they gather all of the supplies and everything they need for their lemonade stand. So um, there's a couple things that I wanna point out in this book. Uh, number one is there's all these parts, I'm not going to read it to you obviously, but there's all these parts where there's words that are in bold lettering. So um, words like negotiations or invest, things like that. Um, they're in bold letters and what students or kids can do is they can actually flip to the back. They can flip to the back of the book here and it has a glossary of terms. So it shows it describes to kids what these words mean. So like this one has nine different new words that kids can learn. Um, and I think that that's a really smart feature. I think that that's really, really cool. So yeah, I really like that. That's one of the things I wanted to tell you about. And then the other thing I wanted to show you was the artwork. Oh my gosh, the artwork. The artwork is incredible. It is so, so good. I can't even describe to you like, I don't know, the artwork in this book is just beautiful. I mean, look at this artwork. It is gorgeous. 
it's so well done and so, so pretty. Um, the colors are really, really vibrant. And one of the things I really love about the artwork in this book is that it takes up the entire page. So I find that really, really fun. And it's so like this one, it just takes up the whole two pages. So I think that's a really cool feature. Um, I think for kids that that can be really, really engaging too. So couple cool things that I wanted to highlight in this first little Ava and May book. Um, the second book is coming out pretty soon. I believe it is called Ava and May Have a Fashion Show. Um, and there's a few new characters, apparently, in the new Ava and May book. So I'm going to highlight that book, too, once I get it. I'm not sure if I'm getting an e-copy of that book or a physical copy of that book. But um, once I get it, I'll share it with you. But I just wanted to share with you this first one. So Ava and May own the lemonade stand. I will put Brittany's information, the author, I will put her information in the description box down below so you can check out her YouTube videos and her Instagram and anything else that she's got going on. So Ava and May own a lemonade stand. All right, and so let's go ahead and jump into the crafty talk for all of you guys that skipped ahead. Um, <laughs> first things first is works in progress. So like I said, I have three new works in progress to show you. Um, the first one here is a very chunky sweater. So <laughs> I picked up this, this sweater pattern from Etsy, I think it is. Um, this is a chunky sweater by Happy Love Company. I'm not sure the name of the person that owns Happy Love Company, but here's her picture. Um, I found her over on Etsy. So Happy Love Company. And this is the chunky sweater that I'm making right here. So one of my sisters actually introduced me to Happy Love Company over on Insta or on Etsy and um, said that she requested one of these sweaters like kind of a while ago. She likes the chunky sweaters. So I decided to go ahead and pick up the yarn for this finally and go ahead and cast on. But I'm actually going to make, since it's a quick knit, it's chunky, chunky yarn. You use a size 19 US needle. It's gonna go fast. So I've decided to make two. I've decided to make one for myself and one for my sister. Um, I'm making the one for myself first just to kind of see what the fit is like and kind of like any adjustments I need to make for her. So let me show you the one that I've started for myself. Um, I have the I have the mic in today and I'm hoping that it's not gonna rattle the camera. Okay, so here is the one that I've started for myself. As you can see, these huge big needles, size 19. <laughs> I've never, I didn't own a size 19 needle. I had to go out and buy these, uh, but I got the circular ones because they only had the circular ones, but I'm kind of wishing that I got the straights. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna move past that. But here's the chunky sweater that I've started for myself. The way that it, this is knit up is it's knit up in sections. So you knit up the front section, the back section, and then the arms and uh and then you seam it all together but i think because this is chunky chunky yarn and this is going really fast like i just started this last night so <laughs> this is as far as i got in like half an hour i think it was so this is pretty far for half an hour of work um, so the rest of this is just going to go really really quickly but um yeah so I think because it goes up so fast, it's not a big deal that I have to seam it in. Like that doesn't bother me too much. But um, anyway, so this is my, my, it's called the Snowflakes and Candy Cane Sweater. I forgot to tell you that. So Snowflakes and Candy Canes. These are the colors that I'm using obviously for myself. So um, this is just Knit Picks yarn. I think this is called Knit Picks Tough Puff. And it's a super bulky yarn. It is 100% wool, but it's not scratchy. Like if I put it on, it doesn't feel like it's going to be itchy. So, but I'm not a huge, like, I don't, I don't get bothered with the itch too much. But if you are somebody that does, I don't think that this yarn is that itchy at all. But I mean, you can judge if you want to buy a skein or whatever, you can judge it for yourself. But yeah, I don't think it's too bad. Um, so this sweater only uses three different colors. So I've got this one as my main color, um, which is just like a beautiful mint color. I think it's actually called mint. So beautiful mint color. And then 
these are my two contrast colors. Um, I don't think that these have names, they have like numbers for names, but this one is just like sort of an orangey red. It's not quite red red, like it, they do have a redder color like that's just straight apple red, I think. Um, but I got this one just because I didn't want it to be too harsh. So I got this color here and then this other color here, which is obviously just a pink color. So these are my two contrast colors, main color, and yeah, that's my works in progress. I'm just knitting it up. Like I said, it is going really, really quickly. And I kind of love it. Like I didn't know if I was going to like chunky yarn or ch having a chunky sweater, but I'm kind of loving it right now. <laughs> I might feel differently once I put it on and realize that it doesn't look as good on me as it does does on the designer because like that looks great on her. <laughs> but I think like obviously once I put it on I'm going to be like, "Oh, this doesn't look good on me," but I love it. <laughs> but anyway, that is what I'm knitting right now. Um, and like I said, I'm going to make two of these. My sister just wants plain monochromatic colors. Like she's not interesting at all. <laughs> she's not going to watch this. So I think it's okay if I call her that. But, um, but yeah, so because she wants monochromatic colors, I go really colorful. And so you can see kind of the detail. But anyway, so that is my snowflakes chunky sweater. Um, the other works in progress that I have to show you today um, is, an, again, a new project. This is the, this is the yarn that I showed you last time that I had as an acquisition. Um, I'm making the Sugar House Toque. To, it's not Toque. I realized it's actually Toque. It's pronounced Toque. So I'm sorry, I said Toque again and it's not Toque, it's Toque. So <laughs> I am making the Sugar House toque, uh, which is just a plain like slouchy kind of hat. And it is from, I think the design is by Lindsay Fowler. Again, I'll put the information in the description box down below. Um, but Lindsay Fowler of Larkspur Knits, I think is the designer. Um, but this is the, this is where I'm at right now. So I've casted it on and started with this Siri Alpaca yarn, which is what I'm using. So Here's my sugar house toque so far. Um, what you do for this pattern is kind of interesting. I've never done um, a hat like this before, but what you do is you actually start, this hat has a lining. So this part that I'm knitting right now is actually the lining of the hat. And then I'll start with, it has two colors. Then I'll start with the outside of the hat, which is gonna be knit in this, this color here. It's just a plain DK weight yarn. It's just a merino wool. Um, and that's going to be the outside of the hat. But the weight, yeah, I don't know. I'll show you, I'll put up a picture maybe of what the finished object is gonna look like. Um, but that's kind of an interesting construction where you knit the lining and then knit the outside of the hat. I think that that's kind of cool. The other thing that I noticed that was kind of weird about this hat too, is that when you cast on, as you can see, you cast on with this provisional cast on um, to start knitting in the round. And I find that kind of weird, kind of interesting, kind of weird. I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing with these live stitches that are just in this provisional cast on. I think essentially what I end up doing is just taking this long end and weaving it through all of the live stitches and just pulling it tight together so it's just like a cinch. Maybe that's what I end up doing. I don't know. I have to read the pattern, but kind of a weird, kind of a weird start. Not sure if I'm a fan of that, to be honest, because it was really fiddly when I went in to do it. It was like because there was only like, I don't know, eight, eight or nine stitches when I started and then it expands from there. It was really, really fiddly to do like only that many stitches with a provisional cast on. It was just like kind of annoying. But anyway, starts with a provisional cast on, you do all of these increased stitches and then you just start knitting in, sh in the round in straight stockinette for about, there's different sizes of the hat. So I think there's like four different sizes. You can knit a kid's version, a toddler version, 
um, an adult human female version, an adult male version. So whichever size fits your head circumference or the head that you're making this for. And um, for me, I'm going to make the adult female size. Um, so for me, I have to knit in straight stockinette for about 10 and a half, 10 and a half inches from the cast on edge. So I'm about, I don't know, a little more than halfway through with that. So, but anyway, I just wanted to show you this works in progress. This is again, the Sugar House Toque from Lindsay Fowler. Oh, I forgot to mention the yarn. So the yarn that I'm using for this, um, I actually got it in a kit um, and it is from the Aster Fiber Company and she sold it, like I said, in a kit. So it came with two skeins. This is the Surrey Alpaca yarn that she has. This is in the color Lavender. And then the other color that I'm going to be using for the outside of the hat is the Composite DK in the color Clover, which is just a beautiful green. So I think they worked really well together and these are like green is my favorite color and purple is a is a, my second favorite so works out well all right and then the third works in progress that i want to show you today is um a project that i randomly started so let me go ahead and show it to you this is my felix pullover and I'm pretty far already with it, surprisingly enough. So this is my Felix pullover. Right now I'm knitting the hem. So I've decided to end this body a little bit early. Actually, it's not early. When you knit this project, um, it says to go knit the body and stock a net until you reach nine inches. And I'm, I'm knitting it as the pattern says. So I'm not making it any longer. But um, anyway, so I'm still knitting on the hem, but right now this is where I'm at on the Felix pullover. So the Felix pullover, I'm actually doing this as um, a, there's a Felix for Fall knit along. The Felix for Fall knit along is put, um, hosted rather, I should say, by Taylor over from Wool Needles Hands. I will link her information in the description box down below so you can check out her channel. She's got a beautiful knitting channel uh, full of crafty goodness and I highly recommend checking her out. She's wonderful and she's from my hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, she lives in Henderson, but it's not really a different place. So anyway, love her channel. I love Taylor um, and yeah, so I've decided to take part in the knit along for this. Um, the Felix pullover is a really simple design. It is very easy um, and simply constructed. It is a design that I have the thing here. Let me see. I have it here. I think it's savory knitting is the, um, just double check. So, um, Savory Knitting is the name of her company, but is signed by Amy Christophers. Um, and it is just a very simple, simple pullover design. There's also a cardigan design um, of the same. There's a Felix cardigan and a Felix pullover. I'm obviously knitting the pullover, but you can knit the cardigan if it's easy for you. Um, so, this yarn that I'm using for this project is a pretty big yarn as you can see here it's a worsted weight so it's these needles are a larger size needle so the yarn that I'm using is this yarn here it's from the fiber company it is called the Cumbria yarn that's their um, that's their yarn it is a um, wool merino and mohair blend so that's kind of interesting I never seen a yarn that is like a mohair and wool blend I find that kind of cool, but um, I got it. It is in this beautiful teal color. I think it's just called Eden, I want to say. It's a beautiful teal. It's just, I don't know, it's really nice. The only thing I will say about this yarn is that it is quite scratchy. I think the reason why it's kind of scratchy like that is because it's got 100% wool and then the mohair in it at the same time. And I don't know if anybody of you are like this with mohair, but mohair can be really really scratchy like I don't know I ha I could go off on a tangent about how much I don't like the fact that every single project out there nowadays has like 
carry it with mohair. Like every garment project that I look at is like knitted double with some kind of fingering weight or DK weight yarn and then held double with mohair. I don't know. Anyway, let me not go off on a tangent about how much I dislike that, but <laughs> I thought it was cool that this yarn has it in the yarn already and then I didn't have to buy another skein of like mohair. So that was kind of cool. Um, but because of that, it is just a little bit, especially to that sensitive skin, like on the neck and stuff, it's just a little bit scratchy. So I love this yarn. I love the color of it. But I think if you're going to get it, just know that it is a little bit harsh. So um, anyway, but that is the yarn that I'm using for my Felix pullover. And as you can see, it's just a top down raglan style sweater. But the raglan is kind of cool because you have this beautiful lace motif that you do on the sides, if you can see. I don't know if you could see that. But it's just a beautiful lace motif that you do. That's actually where your increases come from for your raglan increase. And yeah, I find that really, really simple and easy. So it's just like the only things that you have to know for this project are like stockinette and yarn overs. Super easy. Nothing complicated. And ribbing. But ribbing is easy. So yeah, kind of nice. Um, <laughs> I think after all of the kind of complicated projects that I've been doing over the past year, like brioche projects, twists and turns, um, cable, different cables. I don't know, just a random, random projects that I've been doing. It's kind of nice to just knit something that is really simple and easy and doesn't take a lot of thinking about it. I could just sit there and watch t television and just like knit away and I don't have to think about what row I'm on. That's kind of nice. So I kind of needed that after working on all the projects that I've been working on. So that I think is why it's gone so fast for me. But uh, but yeah, so I'm almost cast it off on the body. I've started with the hem here, but I'm not quite done with it. I think I have another inch or two to go. Um, and then I'll be done with the body and I'm gonna do the sleeves. Now, I only have this skein that I'm using right now and this skein left. And there is about, let me see, it's a worsted weight, there's 236 yards in each skein. So I'm hoping that I can, I'm obviously gonna be able to finish the body, but I'm hoping that I can finish, cause the, arm, the arms on this are supposed to be long, and I'm hoping that I can make them long. If I can't, I might have to make them three quarter sleeves, which is still fine. But uh, anyway, I'm hoping that I can make them long, but you never know. So I don't want to be playing yarn chicken. So <laughs> that is where I'm at on my Felix pullover for the Felix for fall knit along, um, which I think ends on December 1st. So I'm definitely not going to be done before December 1st, but it is what it is. So I started late. But yeah, that is my third works in progress. All right. And then the last thing I have to show you is my acquisitions. So let me show you the first one already that the one that I've already opened. Um, let me show you that. This is yarn from Moon Glow Yarn Company. I buy from Moon Glow Yarn Company kind of a lot. So <laughs> sorry if you're tired of hearing about Moon Glow, but I really like her yarn. Um, anyway, <laughs> this is the yarn that I got from Moon Glow Yarn Company. And this is a kit. So I got this kit for the, um, what's it called? The fa Boxy and Faded or Faded and Boxy, something like that. Or maybe it's called Lace and Fade. Oh my gosh, I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's by Jojo Locatelli, <laughs> the pattern. I'll put her information in the description box down below. Many of you will already know what I'm talking about just because this pattern kind of went viral and everybody bought it. Um, everybody bought it, bought their yarn, finished it, already had it done, and I bought mine super, super late and have decided to make it next year. So 
anyway, but I have my yarn. <laughs> this is a yarn kit again that I got from Moon Glow Yarn Company. I got the blue version. There is another version of this kit that is in pinks. So if you like pinks, you can get that. But I liked the blue. I thought the blue was really pretty. So I got the blue. Um, obviously, it comes with four different skeins of the color here, which are going to be your fade. And then the main color, and this is the mohair in the main color. This is the same color. This is just the mohair version of that color. So yeah, this is the yarn kit that I got. It's called April Showers which is the yarn kit for the Lace and Fade Boxy that I got. Lace and Fade Boxy, that's what it's called. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it just came out and I was like, oh my God, that's what it's called. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Lace and Fade Boxy. So this is what I'm gonna be making with this yarn kit. But uh, anyway, I was very excited. It's a beautiful kit. Sorry, the, the bag is kind of loud so I can't like move it around too much, but. Anyway, it's a beautiful kit. I really, really like it. I can't wait to get started with this project, but I don't think I'm gonna start this until like next year. And I think that's, I've got other things that I'm doing right now, so I'm not gonna start that for a little while. Uh, but anyway, let me get on to the next one. So the next uh, acquisition that I have to show you, I'm so excited about. That is my Hiber Knit Along kit. Ah! As you can see, I have not opened it yet. I'm so excited about this. So if you don't know, um, this Hyper Knit Along kit is from Stephen and Penelope. Stephen and Penelope is a yarn shop owned, co-owned rather, by Stephen, uh, Stephen West, or West Knits, Mr. West Knits, as people like to call him. <laughs> and after his mystery knit along every year that I've participated in this year, after his mystery knit along, he does the hyper knit along. This is the third year that he's done the hyper knit along. I haven't uh, haven't um, participated in the hyper knit along before, so this will be my first time doing it. But it basically starts, I think, at the end of December. So like December 29th or something like that, I think is when it starts. Um, so after Christmas is when this, this project will start. And I think it goes for all of January. I don't know if it goes into February, but it goes for all of January for sure. Um, and what we do is we knit a shawl that he designs specifically for the Hyber Knit Along. So, you know, Stephen loves his shawls. Um, <laughs> I've never participated rather in the Hyber Knit Along before, but this particular shawl that we're knitting this year is just blew me away. It is so beautiful. Like, I will show you a picture of it. It is gorgeous. It is called the Aurora Cabin Shawl. And so I knew, I was like, I have to make this. I have to make this. It's like, I have to do it. It's so pretty. Um, and I just, I can't wait. I can't wait to get started with this project. Um, but because it's a knit along, I think I'm gonna go ahead and participate in the knit along. So I went ahead and bought a kit. I did it. I splurged and bought a kit because the kits are not cheap but you get a bunch of stuff in it. So I think it was totally worth it. But let me go ahead and open my kit for you um, because I'm so excited. I have it backwards. So I bring it along, cute little box. And this is the inside. Oh my gosh, here's the inside. Okay, so let me show you all the things that you get. All right, so First things first, you get all these different notions. So I got this cute little notions nest. They're just these little felt nests that you, there's three of them, I guess, that you put together. It shows you how to put them together and they're just these cute little, you can keep all of your knickknacks in, uh, your knitting knickknacks in these cute little notion nests. So I thought that was really cute. You get the Hyber Knit Along Candle which is so fun. It's it's a warm and woody fragrance candle. So it's a warm and woody scent. So we'll see what it... Ooh, Ooh it's really nice. Ooh! Ooh, I love it. Ooh, I can't stop. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's really nice. It's a really nice scent. It's very exactly what it says, warm and woody. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it, it's great. 
I think that's bergamot. Oh, that smells so good. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> you get the candle in the kit and you get these little nests. And then the other thing that you get is the new hyper knitting number three book. So this is Stephen's third hyper knitting book apparently. And it's got a whole bunch of different patterns besides the one that we're making. So let me go ahead and show you the shawl that we're going to be making. I'm not going to show you this whole book because obviously I want you to purchase the book and not, uh, there, the fan is off. So, um, but I want you to purchase the book if you can, but let me show you the Aurora cabin shawl. Look at it. It is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Stunning. It is stunning. So that's the Aurora Cabin shawl. Let me see if there is like a full length picture. No, there's no. Okay. There's a full length picture on this side. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. I love it so much. I can't wait to knit this project. Um, so that's the shawl that I'm going to be making for the Hyber Knit Along starting, like I said, on December 21st or December 29th, excuse me. Um, and let me show you the yarn. Okay. Ah! I put the box down because I'm just going to start breaking things. Okay. So I got Momonoki yarn. So it's got a beautiful Momonoki yarn sticker. Um, the yarn kit that I got is called Mocha Teak. So, just if you're curious. Oh my god. Okay. Ah, so excited. Okay. Oh my gosh. So, for this particular project, you need five colors. Five colors. Um, so, this is the Mocha Teak. Let me see if I can hold all of these up. For you to see. <laughs> this is the Mocha Teak yarn uh, kit that I got from Mogamanoki from Stephen and Penelope. Um, I'm so in love with these colors. So this color is called Teak. Fitting. Called Teak. It's kind of like a beautiful light brown. There's a spot of green in it. I don't know. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful color though. And this is a really soft, beautiful yarn. I've never, like I said, I've never used Momonoki before, but it's really nice. It is 75% uh, superwash merino wool and 25% po is it polyamide or polyamide? I'm not sure how you say that. Um, but anyway, beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, so this is called teak. This color here is called prune. It's this really pretty, I think these are hand dyed yarns too. They just, yeah, hand dyed in Germany. So that's really nice because it's got sort of like a var variated color, variegated rather color. So it's just got like a really pretty purple. It's got some dark purples, some lavender purples, um, some a little bit of gray in there too, I think. That's really nice. So that's called prune. And then this one here is called mocha. So that's where mocha tea comes from. <laughs> this one is called mocha, which is just a beautiful sort of um, super light brown and beige. There's also a little bit of green in that one too. Yeah, it's really pretty. Um, and then this one here is called silver, which is just a very silvery, frosty kind of yarn. Beautiful color. And then this one, this is the last one, is called copper. So this is a beautiful color too. Ooh, look at that detail. It's got some really pretty speckles in it. Really pretty like gray and purple and brown speckles in this beautiful peachy, creamy peachy color. Copper, it's called. So maybe it's got some bronze in there too. Anyway, this is the kit that I got. <laughs> I'm super excited to make the Aurora Cabin Shawl with these colors. I think it'll just be a really cozy and warm project for me to do. Um, and I want to I wanna start to work on less things at a time. So when I do this project, I want it to be I'm only working on this project. I'm not working on any other projects at the time I'm working on this. So anyway, but that's the plan. This is my Mocha Teak Cabin Shawl kit that I got 
And what I'm gonna do for the hibernitoli is I'm going to actually, I don't think I'm gonna do vlogs on this channel, but I think I'm definitely gonna do a whole series devoted to the hibernitolong. Um, kind of like I do for the mystery knit along, kind of like that, but um, maybe a little different, but kind of like that. So I'm gonna do that for the hibernitolong along this year. So I hope you guys enjoy that because that's gonna be really, really fun. So yeah, that's what I got. That's all I have to show you guys today. I don't really have anything else. Um, so it's kind of a quicker video than normal, but I think that's good. So, um, happy Thanksgiving to all of you out there who are celebrating today. Today is Thanksgiving, and yeah, so happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, it's a really yummy day, <laughs> but I can't wait to eat later. Um, and then tomorrow, Friday, I'm actually leaving to go back home to Las Vegas, where I'm from, so... Las Vegas, Nevada is my hometown, and I'm going to go visit my sisters that still live over there. So I'm going to be leaving tomorrow, so I want to go ahead and get this video out today to make sure it comes out. So whenever you're watching this, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I hope you have a happy, happy holidays coming up, and I just wish you all the best. Thank you so much for watching my video. Like I said, all the information, all the things that I talked about will be in the description box down below, so feel free to check that out. But other than that, happy knitting, my friends. Bye.